The FTO is repealed, the opposition is united, and now the fight goes on to Tehran for a free Iran. We worked. We united. And we have brought under the singular leadership of the POMI the cause of Iranian freedom. In its darkest hour, words that free people will always remember, the years of appeasement have proven not to work. The attempts to engage the mullahs were a failure. The repeal of the FTO will be remembered by history as a critical beginning in the liberation of a free Iran. And you lived to see it, and you were part of it, if you're a part of this movement. This congratulations is to all of you. You have changed the course of history. These fights we have won. The opposition is united. It is strong. It is recognized. The battle now turns to Iran itself. It is time to rise up. It is time to take the mullahs down. It is time for a free Iran. And that time is now. Now. For you to thank us is generous. Because in many ways it was you, it was the supporters of the MEK, it was the people who believe in Madame Rajavi, and Madame Raji, Rajavi herself who made this victory possible. Your perseverance, your tenacity, we wouldn't have been able to do, no matter how strong and powerful the array of Americans and, and our allies from other parts of the world were, we would not have achieved this victory without you, without the perseverance, and we must pause and say, without the wonderful perseverance and forbearance of those 3,400 people at Camp Ashraf. We understand our job is not done. The work is not done. We understand, first and foremost, we must, we must ensure the safety and the dignity and the decency of the residents of Camp Liberty. And that means, that means getting Liberty classified as a refugee camp. You know, it is ludicrous. Do you know what Liberty is classified at the UN? It's classified as a temporary transit location. It is semi-permanent. And as such, it should be classified by the UNHCR as a refugee camp now. <laughs> Secondly, because the UN and the US, to a degree as well, have not fairly enforced conditions in Liberty, the residents of Liberty are spending money on things they don't need to, they shouldn't have to spend money on. That they have to, to finance their just living conditions, they have to be able to sell the property that remains at Ashraf. That's simple and just and fair. And the Iraqi government, with an assist from the UN, has put every roadblock possible in the way of fair disposition of that property. We have to take it on our shoulders to ensure that the UN and the US get the message to the Iraqis that there must be a fair disposition of that property. It is absolutely essential. The, this is a, a victory that is a very, very important one that makes a lot of other things possible. It would not have been possible, as the others have pointed out, without your tremendous support. The uh, 100,000 people that showed up at the events in Paris, all your support throughout the last uh, three or four years, it would not have been possible without the bravery and the courage of the people originally in Camp Ashraf who are now in Camp Liberty. We have with us today a parliamentary delegation from Egypt and a delegation of uh, people from Syria who oppose the regime. And I'm very, very glad they're with us today. It's the reason we're all here, people of all different diverse backgrounds, because uh, we seek a peaceful, a lawful, a democratic, non-nuclear Iran. That's our goal. That's our desire. That's our wish. That's our dream. But before we can even talk about that, we have to remember 
uh, the people who put their lives most at risk, some of whom have lost their lives, to make even what we've achieved possible. And that's the people originally in Ashraf and now at Liberty. First of all, without delay, Liberty should be designated a refugee camp by the United Nations now, not later. Today, it should be done. It should have been done before. It should be done now. And second, uh, uh, Ambassador Kobler must live up to the promise that he made to me directly, to my colleagues directly, when we all met. He gave us his word that the property of the people at Ashraf would be sold, that it would be done fairly and it would be done properly. And so far, he has reneged on that promise. He has not lived up to that promise. And we are going to continue to dog him until he does. You don't get away with breaking promises, not to us. We will make sure that he keeps that promise. <laughs> Seems to me that it is time to rethink what we've been doing. Uh, there are three possible options, right, for my country, for the United States. One would be to continue what we've been doing, which is seeking to negotiate with the uh, Ayatollah and with, uh, and with the regime. Uh, that uh, strategy uh, has been a, a failure. That strategy of uh, seeking to negotiate has only led to Iran getting closer and closer and closer to becoming a nuclear power. The second option uh, has to be the last uh, resort. And then the third one is an option that hasn't been considered. Hasn't been considered, but should be. And I believe this is the option that would work. And here's what it's called. Regime change in Iran. So regime change is the right answer. And regime change is possible. Regime change is, uh, change is possible because there already exists an alternative to the regime in Iran. The condition under the mullahs in Iran has got to be one of the worst histories of oppression in the last hundred to, uh, to, 200 years. So the, the, it's there. It's possible. It can be done. The alternative exists. So as we keep in mind our commitment to the people in liberty and not lose sight of that goal that I outlined at the beginning, we've got a, we've got a long-term goal. But I'm not sure it's going to be that long-term, which is regime change in Iran.